Mike, can you speak to your decision on uh, the opening day starter? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely can. It's exciting, right? You Darvish, um, and then Joe Musgrove the day after. Uh, I mean, these are the guys that anchor our starting rotation, have had tremendous all seasons, um, are more than ready and chomping at the bit to uh, get started for regular competition, and couldn't have two better guys at the top of rotation. Um, it's an honor to have them there. It's one game, but the honor of opening day. It's, we make kind of a big deal out of it. Yeah. Pitchers like it. Why was it you? Uh, it slated into really a lot of the work, the way the work went. And then, um, gosh, you know, you could have literally flipped a coin. Um, what a good situation to have, to have two stud aces at the top of your rotation. Um, you know, it just worked out from a work standpoint, a build-up standpoint, for you to get the uh, opening day nod. Will Joe get the home opener? That's a good, good question, but TBD. <laughs> let's, now you have those two let's, let's get to Korea first. <laughs> now that you have those two guys lined up, do you know what the plan would be for, for King specifically? Like, would he be available to pitch in those Dodgers games? He will be available, yes. Given that he's done it before, he's pitched in the league before, he seems like a pretty adaptable guy. Like, you anticipate that being pretty seamless for him, even though he is building up for a starting portfolio? I do. He is um, hungry to compete, and he's had the experience to do it, and he's um, more than willing and capable, and and good chance he's going to do it. This is a unique challenge in that you will pitch today, and then like nine, ten days till he goes again. And, you know, Joe will pitch Wednesday, have a week. How will they stay ready? Yeah, I mean, like we use the term elite adjuster a lot, and clearly it's not a blueprint for anybody. Um, but we're relying on their experience. They. Uh, We'll get their work in, you mentioned the next couple of days, and then they'll go about their business between now and their opportunity to start in Korea. So I have complete confidence they'll, they'll be in a good situation and ready to pitch when, they get, when the bell rings. You've been a part of quite a few you know, end of spring trainings where you've been one of the decision makers in there. How does this, how this is coming down with like your bench spots, how does this rank in terms of how tight it is? This is as tight a competition as I've seen in my, my years of managing. Um, Everyone has basically sees the opportunity and there's a path for everybody. There's not enough room for everybody, unfortunately. And, um, you know, some tough conversations took place today. A few more tough ones are coming and then some celebratory conversations as well. So, um, yeah, it's a tough competition and we're continuing to evaluate it. Your lineup today, Bogart's leading off, Tatis batting second. Let's say hypothetically that was a regular season lineup. What do you like about that combination one-two? Yeah, you might see it, you know, in a different manner tomorrow um, the day after. So, um, yeah, what I like about it, you know, you've got a guy in bogey that you got two of your better guys at the top of the lineup that when you turn the lineup over, you're comfortable, confident, excited to have them at that, you know, at the top. Um, you know, bogey's got a takes great at bats, higher on base percentage, um, enjoys the leadoff spot. Like, you know, he likes hitting anywhere. But, um, you know, so get him on and, and, you know, have him tied to be able to drive him in and do some things behind him that are, you know, as dynamic a player as he is. Um, but the good news is those guys are pretty interchangeable. What did Jake and Marcy show you at this camp? Quite a bit. Yeah, Marcy had a really good camp. Um, you know, seen him play, obviously had a great fall league. But you don't know how guys are going to react till they actually get here in this environment, and it's the next to the one of the next to the last steps. You know, you can't replicate a major league game um, or a major league season, and how guys are going to respond. And you know, when the bullets start to fly for real, you know, figuratively speaking. But um, he showed up and didn't make the camp bigger than it was. He um, he. A question for him, probably as much as me saying it, but you know, I know he checked the box for him. Uh, he did for me at least about showing up and competing against, you know, major league competition. Didn't back down from it. Looked like he belonged. And really, the decision with Marsh. He did everything he could have possibly done. He was on a great track uh, to join us at some point and have a long career with us at the big league level. Uh, just the decision most recently was, you know, is there going to be everyday time for him? Didn't think there was going to be those bats. Let him go down and get those bats and, and continue to work on his craft. What would be the some of the considerations that go into because some of these guys who don't have a lot of major league experience could come up and not play every day. So what's the difference between the two guys? A guy who want to play every day and a guy who can not? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's no clear, great, perfect answer for that. Um, but ideally, when guys break in for their first time, we want them to get those consistent at-bats and get an opportunity to play every day. 
and our evaluation is that they'll be ready to do that. Um, you know, most guys that break in um, that have been everyday players on the minor league side that come in and more utility role, that's, that's a tough ask at the highest level, not to get those consistent bats and learn what that looks like at the highest level for the first time probably in their lives. So um, we'll continue to work on that with the guys coming up from the minor league side if that's the case. But ultimately, we want guys to show up and there's a path for them to get at bats. So the, uh, who has a little bit tough outing yesterday? What did you see from him and what is next for him? Yeah, you know, go, um, you know, look, he, he got a few balls in the middle of the plate and then he put some good swings on him and, um, I, you know, just didn't have as much finish to his pitches yesterday. Um, some days just not your day. Um, but, you know, I feel comfortable he's going to get another opportunity and, and show what he can do. Clarity on Matsui and when he'll go? Um, it's a good question. I should probably have an answer for you. It's either tomorrow or Wednesday, and I'll finalize that with Ruben and let, let you guys know through our media group. When did you first let Darvish know he was going to be opening it? Um, four days ago. How did you respond? Um, very appreciatively, respectfully, and, and eagerly. I know you've been focused on what you guys are doing here, but the fact that he's going to face Otani on Otani's Dodgers debut just two hours from Japan. I think it's pretty special for our game. I think it's pretty special for you know international baseball and it's special for Major League Baseball. I think it um, says a lot about where the game has grown to, where the game is going, and I think it's a um, you know look we don't plan for these things to happen, but they tend to work out, and I think it's really a fantastic thing for for Major League Baseball and you know and, and the Japan um, fan base is going to be pretty excited about it, I'm sure. So it's a it's a really good thing all the way around.